Good morning. Thank you for joining us again today. Go ahead and grab your Bible, if you will, and turn with me to the 24th Psalm. We'll be picking up in the 5th verse. And I ask you to go ahead, if you will, as well, while you're finding, the, finding your place in your Bible, if you'd like and share uh, the post this morning, uh, so that, um, again, uh, more people will be able to uh, it'll be on their on their news feed. More people will see it that way, and so to help to uh, again to uh, spread the spread the good news. And so I uh, appreciate you doing that. Appreciate again uh, those of you who are, are so faithful um, to every uh, every day uh, to be here and um, studying with me uh, the Book of Psalms. Great book. Uh, it um, it's amazing. Uh, and I hope you're starting to see that, even though we're only uh, we're not even uh, a third of the way into the end of the book. Uh, that um, that there's very few things in, in life uh, that the Book of Psalms uh, doesn't address in some way. Uh, may not be specifically, uh, but there are principles uh, that are revealed in the psalmist life uh, that carry over into uh, our situation. You may not be like David and have ever had a, a son who tried to run you off the throne uh, but uh, take your kingdom from you, uh, but uh, you probably have uh, dealt with difficult people. You probably have been betrayed. Um, and may have not again may even been by a family member, the principles and how David dealt with it and uh, the things we learn uh, carry over uh, for us. And that's the, one of the beautiful things uh, for me about the Psalms uh, is, again, that there's practically nothing. Uh, that uh, Every situation, if I look long enough, um, there is uh, going to be something there uh, that uh, carries over and applies uh, to my life. So um, as we start up here again this morning, the 24th Psalm, we'll pick up and hope you got your spot by now. And we're going to be starting in the fifth verse. And just a reminder, uh, again, this Psalm is uh, a Psalm for uh, when the uh, Ark of the Covenant was brought back uh, into uh, the city of Jerusalem. And uh, as it was brought back up the hillside into the city, uh, the, the people began, again, well, I, I was about to speak out of turn there, uh, somebody sang, whether it was the people carrying the ark or the people in the city or both, uh, but this song was one that was sung uh, as the ark uh, returned into uh, the city. And the lesson for us uh, that we have here, again, is the ark represented, it was the presence of God uh, in the midst of the people. Uh, it was where God uh, spoke to the people. It was the, the mercy seat uh, was there. It was in the ark was placed in the Holy of Holies uh, in uh, the tabernacle. And so this was the, the presence of God. And so what we learn from this song, uh, again, as I was saying before, we can transfer uh, into our life and talk about the presence of God uh, the, that we want, we desire, uh, I hope, uh, the presence of God in our life, and we uh, we see again how uh, this song uh, kind of guides us into the steps, the requirements uh, for that to take place. And we're going to be picking up, like I said, in the fifth verse, but I, I need to uh, back up just a minute and get a running start at it. Uh, David has, uh, in verse three and four, he has talked about uh, the person who goes to the holy hill, the person who has uh, the presence of God. He says they need uh, clean hands, pure heart, uh, and not lifted up uh, his soul. In other words, he says under vanity, which means they don't have uh, idol worship uh, or sworn deceitfully. They're truthful. They're uh, they are honest. Is what David is saying, and so. Um, he says that is uh, the requirements. Now, in verse 5, he's going to begin telling us uh, the benefit of having that kind of life, uh, the benefit of being a person uh, with clean hands and a pure heart, the benefit uh, of being a person who isn't worshiping idols, doesn't have, and again, that doesn't mean you have a statue in your backyard that you bow down to. That's anything that comes before God and or and honesty and so 
uh, it's a uh, now we look at why why we do that what are the benefits of that he says uh, who let's just back up in verse 3 and begin reading there who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord or who shall stand in the holy place the answer he that clean with clean he that hath clean hands and a pure heart who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully that person beginning in verse 5 he shall receive the blessing from the lord and righteousness from the god of his salvation this is the generation of them that seek him that seek thy face o jacob salah uh, and so uh what we have then again is uh again the question who can be in the presence of god the answer uh those with clean hands pure hearts and the reward uh, for those, uh, he says, they'll receive a blessing uh, from God. And so uh, the reward, the blessing of, of having that clean heart, those pure, uh, clean hands, pure heart, uh, is again the presence of God, which brings about uh, righteousness. And uh, again, really the, the point um, if you were to try to write a, a, a thesis statement uh, for this uh, for this whole psalm, uh, the point is uh, is that um, those that uh, are uh, that are honest and recognize their sinful condition, recognize that they don't have clean hands, recognize that they don't have a pure heart, uh, then that uh, that that they are uh, that they're going to. Uh, they're going to go to God. They're going to want to do something about it that we cannot uh, enter into the presence of God. We can't stand uh, in his holy place. But when we uh, are able, when we're willing uh, to confess those things, when we're willing to deal, uh, to, to, to wash those hands, uh, again, uh, the idea of dirty hands is, is bad conduct, uh, idols, anything that would come before God. Uh, when we're willing to deal with those things, when we're willing to uh, the, to remove those things, uh, then he has the blessing uh, of the Lord. And the people of Israel uh, could have particularly uh, identified with this, again, for some 60 years now. Uh, they have not had the ark uh, in Jerusalem. They haven't had uh, the presence of the Lord. And uh, again, it goes back to their failures. But uh, when we clean our hands, when we have a pure heart, uh, when we don't have uh, idols in our life, again, not necessarily statues, but if we're not placing things ahead of God, um, when when we're when we're truthful, um, we we see that we enjoy. We shall receive, not might, not may, not could, but shall receive uh, the blessing from God and righteousness uh, from the God uh, of His salvation. Uh, he, 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 God's desire is to bless his people. Uh, as I, I told uh, told you, I don't know, a few days back, I've been working, uh, I set out uh, on a reading plan to uh, read the Bible through, read my, my entire Bible in 90 days. And so, um, again, to do that, you end up reading 16, 17 chapters uh, at, a, at a chunk and so you get a big piece uh, of, uh, of history, a uh, big piece of scripture at one time. And I just, just in the last few days, I've came through the passage where uh, as Moses was getting ready uh, to, to leave Israel, he knew his days were numbered. God had told him that uh, he wasn't going into the promised land and, and, and told him. God says, you know, I've set out a blessing and I've set out a curse. Um, you know, I, I, you know, you can you can choose which one uh, you want, and, and you can you know you can be blessed or you can be cursed. If you want to receive a blessing from God, He's just told us how to do it. Uh, and uh, and I think most people um, who um, have gotten up uh, early uh, this Friday morning to uh, to 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 listen uh, in on uh, this. Um, this post uh, are, are are people who are probably saying, you know, I, I want the blessing of God uh, in my life. I, I need that. I want that. Well, he, he's told us this is how you get it. You you will receive that. You shall receive that blessing uh, when you have clean hands, pure heart, uh, lifted up. Don't don't have idols uh, and and have um, an honest uh, are truthful. And uh, I, I hate to to. 
break it to you, but I think uh, we have to think logically uh, here that God says, his word says, if we have clean hands, pure heart, uh, we don't have idols, we don't, well, we've got honest, we're honest, you shall receive blessing in the Lord. And so if perhaps someone's listening to those, you know, I don't feel, I don't really feel like the Lord's blessing me, well then maybe we need to back up and say, we're not doing the requirements. We're not living by the, the rules and the requirements in the, in the verse three and four that lead us to the reward uh, of verse five, uh, that uh, he is there, uh, he is offering uh, blessing. He is offering righteousness. He is offering uh, salvation here. Uh, but he says there is a, a, a requirement uh, that, um, that that is laid out. These clean hands and pure heart. Uh, and unfortunately, a lot of people, uh, I'm afraid, want to jump straight to verse 5. Uh, we want to jump straight down to we want the blessing of God. We want uh, God to you know give us, do for us, help us, provide for us, protect us, bless us, heal us. Uh, we want all those things from God. Uh, we want Him to you know think about some of the some of the bargains we often make. God, if you'll you know heal so and so, then I'll start going to church. I'll, I'll clean up my life. Well, that's not the prescription here that God gives us. Uh, God doesn't say, you know, if you'll, if, you know, he says, you do these things. You live a, a holy life. You live a righteous life. You, you have clean hands, pure heart. Then you will, then you will receive uh, the blessings of God uh, and righteousness from the God uh, of, uh, of salvation. And so uh, there's a, again, we, we, we want to jump to verse five. We want the rewards without ever talking about the requirements uh, that uh, come in our life. And this is the generation that seek him. They uh, that seek thy face, uh, old Jacob. And so uh, here's kind of the key uh, of um uh, to this uh, to this passage, uh, that those that uh, truly seek the Lord will receive His presence and salvation, and they will be made righteous uh, through the sacrifice uh, of Jesus Christ. Those that genuinely uh, desire to know Him. There are a lot of people out there in this world, uh, and you know as well as I do uh, that there are a lot of people seeking, uh, trying to approach God. Uh, in a lot of different ways. Some are trying to, to work their way. Some are trying to do it through, uh, you know, good deeds and idols. And there's a lot of other, um, you know, uh, religions and false religions, uh, false teachers uh, that are out there. He says, but uh, those that genuinely, uh, if you want to ascend the hill of the Lord, if you want to be in the presence of God, if you want to stand in his holy place, he says, and you have to have clean hands, pure heart, uh, no idols, uh, truthful, uh, honest person, then you will receive uh, a blessing uh, from God. But I want you to, what I want to take away from this passage this morning, and I can't stress it enough, and it goes against I think honestly, almost everything in us, uh, we think of you know we, we tend to, man tends to think of God as some being far off who is just waiting for the opportunity uh, to crush man like a bug on a windshield. Uh, but the truth is, in what this passage and 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 numerous other passages in, in the Bible reveal to us, is that God truly desires. Uh, a relationship uh, with man, so much so uh, that he sent his son to die on a cross for us uh, and, and, have, and, and pay the sacrifice uh, for us to have uh, that relationship. As sinners, we can't enter into the holy place. We can't go uh, to the heel of the Lord as it's described there. It's only uh, through the cleansing of Jesus Christ Christ. It's only through uh, accepting the free gift of salvation and forgiveness. Uh, and so this morning, 
if you're listening uh, and you'd say, Jimmy, I am a child of God. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt I've asked Christ into my heart. Uh, I know he has saved me. There is no question in my life. Then you can hold your head up and know uh, that you can have the presence of God in your life. Uh, that he desires, he wants a relationship. He wants to walk with us uh, through through our daily battles and struggles and good times and bad times. Uh, what a you know again the, the blessing uh, of our salvation. But perhaps this morning uh, you're you're with us and you'd say, you know, I, I don't know uh, if, if I'm uh, a believer. I, I can't tell you that there's ever been a time when I asked Christ into my heart. Then the reality is, the truth is, uh, that, uh, that you don't have the presence of God. And if you were to die today, you would die eternally separated uh, from God. Uh, and so we have to determine, do I want to be in the presence of God? Do I want the presence of God in my life? If I do, then I have to have righteousness. And the only way we can have righteousness, the Bible says our righteousness is as filthy rags. The only way we can have righteousness is accept uh, the righteousness of Jesus Christ that he uh, provided for us at Calvary. I hope that helped you today. Uh, as you go through this life again, if you're a child of God, hold your head up. Uh, enjoy uh, the presence of God in all that you do and everything you're involved in. Uh, enjoy uh, knowing and walking uh, in the presence of God. But if for some reason today, uh, you're listening in and, and you don't know him as your savior, I uh, wish you'd reach out. I uh, wish you'd contact us. Again, our, our numbers are available there. Email uh, address, uh, post in the comments, and get back to you just as soon as possible. I'd love to tell you uh, how you can know Jesus Christ and how you can enjoy uh, the presence of God in your day-to-day -day life. All right, we'll see you back here tomorrow. I hope you have a great weekend.